Welcome to today's webinar, Modeling Multiphase Flow with Positive Displacement Compressor, brought to you by Convergent Science. Thank you for joining us today for the 11th installment of the 2024 Converge webinar series. My name is Matthias Sulis and I am part of the business development team at Convergent Science. I will be your host for today's event. I'm glad I can be here with you today and learn the latest updates about Positive Displacement Compressor Modeling with Converge CFT. Convergent Science is a rapidly growing computational fluid dynamics software company. Our flagship product, Converge, is an industry-leading CFD solver used around the globe to simulate fluid flows in complex systems. Converge features truly autonomous meshing, which eliminates all user meshing time and helps provide fast, accurate results for our clients. Now it is time to introduce our speakers for today's event, David Rowiski. David leads the new application support team at Convergence Science in the Madison office, where he assists customers with CFD problems across a variety of applications. He earned a PhD in mechanical engineering from Cornell University. During today's webinar, if you have a question for David or the team at Convergence Science, please use the question box on the GoToWebinar toolbox. Questions submitted during the webinar will be answered at the end. Without any further delay, I will now pass the ball to David. Thank you all. All right. Thank you very much for that introduction, Mattia. Um, I'm happy to be here with everybody today to present our webinar on modeling multi-phase flows in compressors with Converge. And in this webinar, um, we'll give a brief overview here. We'll learn about some features of Converge, including some new features, uh, relevant to modeling compressors. Um, we'll also talk specifically about um, the different modeling strategies for the multi-phase flow modeling in compressors, give a little bit of an overview on the numerical and the physical model background, although we won't get into too much detail, but we'll spend the majority of the talk on applications of these methods to three different uh, practical flow problems, including liquid injection into a root blower, screw compressor, and a vein compressor to demonstrate the different features and the different uh, capabilities in terms of accuracy and cost. We'll also give a couple snapshots of a real case setup from an oil injected vein compressor so that users can see exactly what inputs are going into the model and so they can know how to set up the models for themselves. Before we get too much into the physical models and the multi-phase features, I want to spend a little bit of an intro to talk about convergent science and converge in particular. Um, the automatic meshing is really the, the key trademark of the, the software it was developed in the 90s to allow simulations on complex moving geometries with a very user-friendly approach to determining an automatic and accurate grid. The mesh is created with both um, adaptive mesh refinement and other meshing strategies. There's a variety of numerical, oper numerical models available for users to choose from depending on their, their types of flows including compressible and incompressible type of flows, and a huge suite of models available for turbulence, combustion, heat transfer, and like most of our talk, we'll go over multi-phase flow modeling. One of the key things that sets ap apart Converge from other options out there are the way in which the, the mesh is treated. So because in positive displacement compressors, the mesh, the geometry, the motion of the boundaries are so complicated and interconnected, it's very important first before we get into our cases to outline what Converge does in terms of the mesh so that if a user is familiar with another software but not Converge, they'll get a good bird's eye picture for what's going on in our software what makes it unique and what makes it stand out from the other options out there. 
In Converge, we start by using a triangulated surface enclosing our fluid volume over a block of orthogonal hexahedral cells, otherwise known as boxes. Those boxes which lie in the interior of the domain, in other words, they're not touching at all that bounding surface, are marked as interior cells. So these cells are going to be high quality, good aspect ratio, orthogonal, hexahedral cells, very good for solving equations on. Now, meanwhile, what happens at the boundary? What happens when this bounding surface intersects our boxes that we've defined as our base grid? In this case, we have the formation of arbitrary sided polyhedra. And at each face of these cell, cells, as the boundaries move, the cells are cut and recut to exactly match the shape imposed by the bounding surface. At the same time as the boundaries move, the appropriate fluxes in terms of mass, energy, and momentum are conserved as the geometry moves in any arbitrary way. This is one of the key things that really makes Converge stand out in the field of positive displacement compressors in terms of giving accurate, robust, stable, and very general treatment that works depending on any arbitrary boundary or motion type. There's three primary methods for the grid control in Converge. The first of them being your base grid. These are the largest cells in the domain. The second is local embedding or embedding of higher resolution cells in a predefined area, volume, or alongside a certain boundary. Like for example, in this image, you can see the lobes of the roots blower have an additional layer of cells around all of those lobe boundaries. The third grid control method, which can be used in conjunction with the other two, is Converge's unique adaptive mesh refinement, or AMR strategy, in which the mesh is refined based on the local gradients or the curvature of other important quantities in the flow, including the velocity, temperature, species mass fraction, or almost anything else that the user would like to select as a criteria for refining the mesh. So together with these three grid control methods, Converge can solve a lot of problems easily and efficiently. On top of that, in positive displacement compressor modeling, other grid control strategies, which are advanced from those three basic ones, may be required. One option is to use proximity-based adaptive mesh refinement or mesh refinement that's based not on the local flow variables, but rather the distance between adjacent boundaries. In this animation here of the screw expander, you can see how the mesh is added right where the lobes of the compressor come close to the casing. We don't want to add the finer cells there all the time, but only when that small gap is present. We can also do the same thing in between the rotor and the other rotor, so we can refine that mesh automatically um, based on our user-specified criteria. Fifth grid control method, which is advanced from the um, original three that I presented, is the inlaid mesh or a boundary layer mesh which can be defined on any particular boundary. This allows the user to get a high resolution along the boundary surface to resolve the wall flow um, without needing to uh, preserve the aspect ratio on the Cartesian grid. Meanwhile, the Cartesian grid can be used in the interior of the domain um, where it's high um, accuracy numerical properties um, will be uh, advantageous. So this allows the user to apply, employ um, you know, a very general amount of uh, different grid control techniques. And depending on the problem you're looking at, certain grid control 
methods might be uh, more preferable than, than others. Before we get into the talk about modeling multi-phase positive displacement compressors, we're, we'll first demonstrate the use of Converge in modeling single phase positive displacement compressors, because the ability to solve these kind of flows accurately is a prerequisite before we get into modeling uh, more complicated situations. So in the next couple of slides, I will very briefly go over a large number of cases solved with Converge with validation data over a wide range of different geometries, motion types, and flow conditions. We'll get started with a reciprocating compressor with three reed valves to, in, to control the suction and the discharge flow. In this case of the refrigerant modeled with a real fluid equation of state, in this case R449A, a typical um, new refrigerant that's being phased in, um, we can see accurate predictions of the cylinder pressure as well as the valve motion, in this case modeled by fluid structure interaction through beam models for each of those three valves. So Converge was able to deliver a very robust, accurate solution for this problem with reasonably complex motion of the piston, which is reciprocating, and the three valves, which move according to the fluid forces. In the next category, going up an additional level of the geometry complexity, we have a scroll compressor, again for a refrigerant, and controlled by a reed valve. In this case, the orbiting scroll orbits inside the fixed scroll, creating the expanding and contracting cavities necessary for the positive displacement process. In this case, we also model the pressure and the valve lift um, of that, that single discharge valve. And again, compared to experiments, to demonstrate that for this single phase refrigerant flow in a compressor, Converge is able to give a very robust solution, even handling that complex orbiting motion and the corresponding small gap sizes that are um, a, a result of the, the motion and the distance between the, the bodies. A sort of similar case is the rolling piston compressor, but of course at much different conditions. In this case, there's a rolling um, object inside of the casing. This follows an eccentric path um, as it's closed off by an oscillating vein in between the rotor and the casing. Converge is able to deal with these kind of motions very easily the user simply applies the motion profile and the mesh is determined by the solver itself. So the user doesn't need to worry too much about how the motion of the geometry and the creation of the mesh will interact with, with one another. In this case, we also look at the chamber pressure and the mass flow rate for a variety of speeds and demonstrate that Converge is able to do a great job to predict the flow in these conditions of this different geometry. An additional level of geometry complexity can be introduced in the case of a twin screw compressor. In this case, we have a complex 3D helical screw shape on both the male and the female rotors. As they rotate, compression pockets are formed that progressively squeeze the gas up to the, the discharge point of the cycle. And in this case, we've demonstrated not just measuring the pressure inside of the chamber um, and the mass flow rate, but also to accurately predict the temperatures of the rotors, um, despite the large discrepancy in the time scale for those two processes, using Converge's uh, unique super cycling feature. A similar case is the twin screw expander, which this which was also solved using the conjugate heat transfer capability of Converge, here to demonstrate the effect of the clearance size. So in this case, the clearance is varied experimentally from 80 micron to 240 micron, and the Converge model was able to accurately reproduce the trend with both speed as well as with 
the um, the um, the tip to casing clearance in in this machine. So a very good test of how that physical parameter was manifested in the simulation results. For a single screw compressor, Converge has also modeled this and validated results um, for this type of flow, which has a much different geometry than any of the other cases, including two co-rotating gate rotors and a rotating main rotor, which together form a complex series of compression and expansion pockets. And you can see from this animation, there's a large amount of backflow um, through those gate rotors. And Converge modeled the mass flow rate across a wide variety of different pressure, mass flow rate, and speed conditions um, for the majority of the points yielding very good agreement uh, with all the, the measurements, in this case for another refrigerant for an organic ranking cycle type application. And finally, we have a claw vacuum pump modeled with Converge um, where we looked in great detail at the, in, at the inner chamber pressure and the pressure pulsations during the discharge process. We compared to experimentally measured values as well as values from um, a, a 1D modeling tool. And we compared this going from a ambient type condition all the way down to a relatively low vacuum and ensure that the mass flow rate could be adequately captured as well as the power across that wide range of the, the flow conditions going just about to the, the terminal mass flow rate for, for this device. A couple of the main advantages for Converge um, in terms of uh, positive displacement compressors are its ability to handle these arbitrary, complex, and um, complexly moving geometries. Handling the steep pitches that are in this deep vacuum twin screw pump are fairly easy with, with Converge. You do not really have to worry about how the the, the pitch of that rotor would impact the, the mesh. Um, similarly, handling variable pitch rotors, like you can see from this animation on the top right, are as simple as being able to describe the, the geometry and the motion itself. Um, for an even more general case with a varying pitch and a varying profile, Converge has no problem whatsoever to import this uh, geometry and to allow the user to, to run this kind of case. So being able to handle these complex and arbitrary geometries is a key feature for Converge to be used in these applications. Now, before we get to the multi-phase applications, we'll talk a little bit about the numerics behind Converge because of the uh, approaches that we'll be showing next. Converge solves for conservation of mass, momentum, and total energy for a compressible fluid. And all of the equations are solved on a collocated grid, meaning that the primary variables are solved at the cell centers and the cell face values are computed um, in a variety of, of ways. There are several schemes for the spatial discretization available, um, including variations between second order and first order, as well as um, Converge's unique monoticity-based flux limiter to preserve the, the stability of the, the scheme. Typically running first order temporal accuracy is used for the VOF problems, although Converge does have a general treatment to allow anywhere between first and second order. Additionally, to allow simulation stability to be and speed to be controlled by the user, the time step can be determined dynamically based on the local CFL number, which is really important for modeling the positive displacement compressors because depending where you are in the cycle, you may have very high velocities, like around the point of the discharge, or you might have very low velocities, like during the points of compression. So having that dynamic time step really gives you an efficient and robust solution to the, the time stepping.
Now, one of the very important qualities of the numerical schemes used in Converge is the amount of attention paid to conservation. Conservation is extremely important in modeling any problem, but in particular in modeling the flow in positive displacement compressors, it's a very uh, minimal requirement of the technique to ensure an accurate and robust solution. And in order to demonstrate Converge's um, very high quality conservation aspects, we demonstrate this through a simple expanding and contracting cylinder performed at different mesh resolutions. In Converge, regardless of your mesh resolution, you'll perfectly conserve the volume, the mass, momentum, and the energy. No matter what your grid resolution is, the total volume and the total swept volume of all the cells is exactly the same. So even with a grid of two cells across the diameter, we can get a very accurate description of the total volume, the pressure, temperature in a positive displacement compression process. In fact, we can even see that there is, to machine precision, no mass change in the domain as the mesh is coarsened to an extreme level with just eight cells at a maximum in the domain. So this quality of the numerical method is very important in modeling positive displacement compressors because we want to be sure that no matter how fine or coarse the mesh is in certain places, we'll still have these overall um, conservation of, of quantities being satisfied. We'll give a very brief um, introduction to the multi-phase techniques available in, in Converge, although we do have a lot more information available in our, our training. Um, Converge, in general, offers two types of multi-phase models. The first of them, for the Eulerian treatment of both the liquid and the gas phase, is the volume of fluid method. Um, contrasted to the second method, the spray modeling, in which the gas phase is handled in an Eulerian sense and the liquid is handled in the Lagrangian sense. And these two approaches can be combined together, including the, the ELSA model, which uh, may be described in a future webinar. In the volume of fluid approach, which will be the main approach that we look at today in modeling the multi-phase flow in compressors, the flow field is solved instead of tracking parcels for, for both phases. The volume of fluid method in Converge is an Eulerian-Eulerian approach in that both the liquid and the gas phase are treated in the Eulerian sense, where cell-wise quantities are continuum and perfectly mixed, including the cells on the interface of the, the two phases. Um, there is one temperature, pressure, velocity for all the cells, um, regardless of what uh, what phase they are in. Other methodologies are included in Converge, including the multi-fluid, multi-field approach, which allow non-homogeneous treatment of the momentum field. However, we won't uh, be discussing that one in, in this particular um, webinar. Now, VOF in Converge has several options for the interface tracking, including PLIC, ATRIC, and FCT. The ATRIC and FCT are the two approaches applicable to compressible flow problems, which are the main topic for discussion today. So those will be the two um, interface tracking uh, schemes that we look at for these types of problems. So in general, Converge can simulate both compressible and incompressible flows with the volume of fluid method. For a lot of applications at room temperature and low pressure, the incompressible assumption and the liquid is okay with proper um, satisfying of the Mach number criterion. For cases at really high pressures or very high velocities, we may see that the compressible approach for the, the liquid phase as well is recommended. These will be typically very high pressure applications like, uh, like fuel injectors, for example. A couple select applications for the, the VOF modeling in Converge include things like fuel injectors,
um, tank sloshing. And like you can see from this image, the, um, the, the cooling of a piston and an IC engine or an electric motor. So these are all very typical applications of the VOF modeling. Now, having discussed uh, some of the baseline of the models involved, we'll start demonstrating um, Converge's capabilities from a very simple case and moving up to uh, more complex cases. And our first case, the simplest, is a is a cylinder filled with air that's injected with some oil to kind of mimic the process that occurs in oil flooded positive displacement machines. After that, we'll talk about three practical um, examples in, um, in real flows. The demonstration case that we'll talk about first is this oil injection into a compressing cylinder. And this case is specifically designed so that the volumes and the time of injection are very representative of what we would see in a, a real positive displacement device. The way this case works is to have a cylinder that's initially filled with air. Um, as it compresses, oil is injected into it and the oil and air mix with one another and the oil absorbs some of the heat of compression of the air. One of the main purposes of having flooded um, positive displacement machines is to reduce high temperatures that, that may occur um, through their, their operation. So this test case is designed to mimic those types of conditions in a relatively um, affordable type of uh, case to run and to do a lot of studies and demonstrations on. The physical processes that occur in this device could be compared to two simplified models um, shown in the, in the uh, center figure. In the center figure, we show the pressure in the chamber as a function of the, the angle for the isentropic compression case, in which case the air exchanges no heat with the, um, the liquid, as well as the isothermal case, in which case is kind of the extreme limiting case where the oil absorbs all of the, the, the heat of compression of the, the gas phase. And as we go closer and closer to the isothermal conditions, as the oil absorbs more and more of the, the heat, um, you'll see that the pressure at the end of the cycle goes down. So that's really the key output for this, this demonstration. What is the pressure achieved in the cylinder by the end of the, the compression step? If we compare this to a case with air only and no oil injection, you'll see that that pressure lies almost exactly on that isentropic compression line. So our blue curve is a case with air injection with air with no oil injection, whereas the cyan curve is the curve with, uh, from the case with um, oil injection included. And you'll see that there's kind of two effects of the oil, one of them very subtle, a slight increase in the pressure during the time of the injection. But then secondly, more importantly, by the end of the compression process, you see that that pressure in the cylinder is quite a bit less than it was with the, the air only or compared to the isentropic compression condition. And the reason that this happens is because of two things. One is the heat transfer between the gas phase and the liquid phase, which is physical and one of the purposes of having the oil injection. But the other reason is due to numerical effects. It could be due to the grid size being too coarse the discretization being too low, or the interface tracking um, um, not capturing the, the interface with high accuracy. So in order to characterize the amount of mixing or diffusion that happens in this case, we use a single pressure coefficient, which is the ratio between the point of this pressure at the end of the cycle compared to the pressure for isentropic compression.
and we'll demonstrate the effect of the numerical accuracy first by looking at what happens as the grid is refined. So we do a lot of studies initially with a um, uniform base grid everywhere. So no attempt to use adaptive mesh refinement to um, um, adaptively refine, but we'll refine everywhere. And we'll look to see what happens as the grid is refined. And this image in the top right shows the, the fields for three cases. The one on the far left is the very fine grid. And as we go to the one on the right, we're going to extremely coarse grids. Um, and as this plot on the lower right hand side shows, as the grid is refined, going from right to left, that discharge pressure ratio, what we use to quantify the amount of the um, overmixing that we have in the simulation gets closer and closer to one. However, we'll see that even at the really fine grids, this discharge pressure ratio in the simulations never really goes beyond 0.8. And that's all effect of the um, diffusion, be it numerical or, or physical, that's, that's in the problem. Next, we'll look at the application of adaptive mesh refinement. So as we add mesh on the interface, we can do something very similar to what we did as we refine the grid in the uniform case, however, with a uh, much higher efficiency of that mesh. Because that mesh is refining based on the local uh, void fraction for a given computational cost, we have a much higher accuracy in terms of this discharge pressure ratio. And that's one of the key strengths for being able to apply converge to these multi-phase problems where you have very sharp gradients and the resolution across those gradients is really important to your problem. However, what you notice is that even for the very fine meshes with adaptive mesh refinement, the discharge pressure ratio kind of stagnates around 0.8 we can get a more, more efficient or a less costly solution for the same accuracy using adaptive mesh refinement, but it never helped to get the discharge pressure ratio any higher than what it was before. So for this approach, in order to further reduce the amount of numerical diffusion at the interface, we turn to one of the new features of Converge, um, namely surface compression. In surface compression, um, we apply a numerical technique to reduce the diffusion, the artificial diffusion at the interface between the, the two phases. The, the modeled void fraction transport equation, or similarly your species transport equations, um, would see an additional surface compression term in there, which applies an amount of anti-diffusive flux to combat the numerical diffusion at the interface. And in terms of modeling the flow in multi-phase positive compressors, the main question we have is this, can applying surface compression at the interface between the phases improve the accuracy of the solution while not causing any harm, for example, numerical stabilities? And to this end, we first look at that test case we were looking at before, the injection into the compressing cylinder for three different values of the surface compression constant. These values range from zero on the left-hand side to one on the right-hand side. And as the surface compression constant is increased, we have more and more of that anti-diffusive flux added to sharpen the interface. So the case on the left is basically the case with no surface compression active. And you can see, I'll play this again, by the end of the cycle, if you compare those two approaches on the far left and the far right to one another, there's significantly more diffusion across the interface in the simulation on the far left, the one with no surface compression. Whereas adding that surface compression did a great job to keep the interfaces um, together. Now, the other question is, how did that impact our cylinder pressure? Because that's the key output at the end of the day for a lot of these simulations. And we'll get very quantitative with it 
and compare it for accuracy by comparing to ideal isentropic compression. And if we look at the effect of that discharge pressure ratio as we increase the amount of the surface compression, we can see it eventually does get closer and closer to one, reaching a value of about 0.92, um, which is quite a lot higher than what we could establish on our finest grids where the value without surface compression was a little bit less than 0.8. So this makes a big difference when looking at the pressure at the time of the discharge opening, because any pressure difference that we have at the time of discharge opening is going to have a large impact on any pressure pulsations or even the mass flow rate through the domain that's affected by um, any small changes in the, the pressure at the time of the at that time in the, the process. So now having quantified the results of our different um, VOF models for a simpler case, we'll next increase the level of complexity by looking at three practical examples. The first of them being oil injection in a roots blower. And the case setup looks something like this. We'll have an air inlet at a low pressure, two counter rotating rotors, which form uh, pockets that carry the fluid, up to the outlet, which is at a higher pressure. Uh, meanwhile, there's two injection locations for the oil at a specified mass flow rate in order to achieve about 80% of the mass injected by oil, which is a um, pretty representative value for um, these types of cases. Now, the one difference about this case, because of the way that the chambers are formed by the root blower, there's no internal compression in this type of case. Um, so in other words, as the oil is inject as injected, it's injected at a constant pressure uh, type of condition. And the pressure doesn't change until the discharge port is, is exposed to those rotating chambers. In our baseline case, we look to see the effective volumetric efficiency at about 2%. Um, but we notice that for the oil injection, the flow at the outlet is very diffuse. In other words, it's, it's almost perfectly mixed. And one of the reasons for this, um, you know, even if we compare to that simpler compression in a cylinder case, one of the reasons that this flow is so mixed is just because of how strong the interaction of the geometry and the flow is. So now that we've introduced these rotors into the simulation, the flow field, including the convection and the mixing, is just so different um, in these cases that the flow at the outlet is very well mixed by the time that it, it gets there. And that's one of the key um, issues to address. You know, this is almost um, entirely due to the um, diffusion effects, whether it's the, um, the, the physical diffusion or the um, the numerical diffusion is what's to be addressed in the, the studies. You can also see the effect of the oil injection on the outlet temperature as the outlet is cooled quite a lot from the um, isentropic compression value. Now we'll demonstrate this case with the two solutions that we looked at previously, um, the adaptive mesh refinement and the surface compression being applied at the interface for three different values of the surface compression constant as before. So in the far left, we have no surface compression active. And on the far right, we have the maximum amount of surface compression active. And the first visualization will be on the oil mass fraction, which we looked at before for the no surface compression case. And the thing to get an appreciation for in this case is that the addition of that surface compression or combating that numerical diffusion has a much bigger effect and a much more noticeable effect in the 3D fields visualized for this particular case. In fact, you can see that by the time the flow reaches the outlet, it's not even in a mixed configuration. There's still a lot of unmixed air and liquid in the domain at that time and it increases as that surface compression constant increases. You'll also see that there is a minor impact on the pressure if we look at the 
or rather the, uh, the temperature, if we look at the temperature fields, those in, in many ways follow the mass fraction fields with the additional change from the compression. So if you look at the uniformity of the temperature at the outlet, it's much, much, much uh, more highly non-uniform in the cases where surface compression is active. And this is capturing the physical effect of you know, avoiding all of that numerical diffusion at the, the interface and resulting in a flow which is much more um, characteristic of the actual device. Now the next level of complexity is to introduce the oil flooded screw compressor. And in this case, we have a much more complicated geometry than the, the roots blower. And we also have the addition of the internal compression. So as the two rotors rotate, they'll form a pocket which squeezes smaller and smaller. And as the liquid is injected, it's subject to that internal compression from the positive displacement process. So the case we look at is a case provided by City University London. And it's one that's been studied by uh, quite a few other tools. And it's going to be the main benchmark that we use to validate the, the physical results. Um, and one of the first questions and one of the hardest things for this case is to actually get it to a statistically stationary state. So to make sure we run it long enough where the flow rates of the oil and the air are stabilized, as well as the temperature at the outlet to be stabilized. And we found that um, ideally, four revolutions of the male rotor were enough to reach a statistically stationary state. However, we did perform up to 20 revolutions to, to confirm this. And when we compare it to the, the measured results, there's a couple main metrics we look at. The first is the air flow rate. Um, so the air flow rate is compared for two different test cases, a low speed and a high speed. Um, also, two different pressures were, were looked at, but to simplify the comparison, we'll just look at um, the simulation results, which are in the blue curves at the, the higher pressure, the eight bar for the two different speeds, compared to the measurements. Um, for the measurements, we, we see those in the red and the yellow marks. And in, in all cases, Converge did a, a great job to accurately predict the air flow rate. Um, it was better at the low RPM. At the higher RPM, there was a little more uncertainty. That's why there are two different measurement points that are included there in both the red and the yellow. So for the initial reference, reference number one, our agreement was very good. And for reference number two, um, we were predicting uh, higher than, than what was measured over there, which when we actually look at the volumetric efficiency, which is just another way to look at the air flow rate, but scaled by the, the maximum amount of air flow rate you could, could have, um, the, the results of that second measurement point looked a little bit suspect in that the volumetric efficiency uh, was reduced a lot with the, the speed, which is not the trend you would normally expect. So either um, something more complex is going on in this particular case, which isn't included in the, the model, or we'll restrict the comparison to the, the reference one, in which case we do see in both the, the measurements and the simulations of that particular point that the volumetric efficiency did increase with the speed, um, whereas the leakage rate, which may be constant because the pressure ratio is more or less constant, um, should have had slightly lower volumetric efficiency for that, that lower speed case. So all in all, Converge did a, a reasonable job to predict the mass flow rate, although there's still some uncertainty with that. In terms of measuring the power, the output from Converge is really uh, straightforward in terms of getting that from the bound wall dot out input, or rather output from the two rotors and summing those power levels together. And we did a good job to predict the, uh, the overall trend as well as the, the general values for this case. We also predicted the, the oil flow rate for both cases, although we didn't, did not have the, the measurements to compare to for, for all points. And we were slightly uh, um, um, unsure of where the, the agreement would be, and this, this could have an important impact on the case. But overall, 
the amount of air that's in the domain is one of the most important quantities to quantify. And we saw that these cases have an overall air mass fraction of between five and 10%. So relatively a large amount of the mass is coming from the, the oil. And lastly, the last quantity to validate on is the, the discharge temperature, which is one of the key things to look at in terms of understanding our energy balance and whether or not we're getting the right amount of air, liquid, and the right amount of the, the heat transfer between all of those phases. And we did a good job to predict the, the overall outlet temperature. Um, the, the key information about the case is displayed below. Um, but the main takeaways are that the adaptive mesh resolution is, the adaptive mesh refinement is key on improving the computational efficiency to restrict those higher um, accuracy areas to the places closer both to the mass fraction and the volume fraction interface to refine the mass um, weighted properties like the, the specific heat capacity and similarly the uh, temperature as well as the volume weighted quantities, for example, things like the density. So we found both of those controls important. And overall, the time step is one of the limiting factors because of the multi-phase aspect of the model, we are restricted to relatively small time steps, um, typically requiring about 10,000 to 20,000 time steps per revolution of the rotor, um, which took about somewhere between 40 and 60 hours for, um, for the, the computational time. Some of the key outputs like the oil mass fraction and the pressure on the rotors can be seen below. And at least qualitatively, it's very similar to what we saw in those other simpler test cases. Now, the last case that we'll briefly go over is the oil flooded vein compressor, which in principle is very similar to the screw compressor because it has those three key processes the air injection and the squeezing up to the higher uh, pressure at the outlet, the complex rotation motion, in this case, the vein and the, the rotor, as well as the oil injection into the, the, the cavities. But for this case, we contrasted two different approaches. One of them, the spray modeling, which is typically used for um, higher velocity atomizing kind of sprays characterized by the, the Weber number. Um, contrasted to um, the VOF approach, which we typically use for the lower velocity um, cases where it's more important to keep the, um, the interface um, model between the, the liquid and the gas, um, a um, component of that model, as well as being able to model the upstream flow while, where the oil is um, clearly in the, the continuous phase. So the case set up as like it's in Converge Studio, our pre and post processor is shown on the right hand side of the screen. The key models being the volume of fluid and the adaptive mesh refinement. To give you an in-depth look at this particular case setup, the adaptive mesh refinement settings are shown in the left side uh, image and the volume of fluid model settings are shown in the in the center. For the AMR, we have the velocity, the void fraction, and the mass fraction as our key um, um, controls. And for our volume of fluid setting, we have the flux corrected transport as well as surface compression active for this type of case. And if we compare um, quantitatively later and qualitatively now, the two cases, we can see very different behavior in the terms of the, um, the spray parcels getting injected in the spray model on the right, as opposed to the, the ISO surface of the liquid um, interface on the, the left-hand side with the volume of fluid approach. However, you do see when we look um, when we look quantitatively at the, the results for the key output being the pressure and the temperature at the end of compression, we see very similar results from these two models showing the oil's ability to absorb some of the heat of compression in both cases um, reasonably well. Um, one of the small differences, which is probably too subtle to see on this plot, 
is that with VOF and surface compression, we did have slightly lower pressure at the end of compression and the beginning of discharge than we did in the case with the, the spray. Now, in summary, we've shown Converge to be a robust tool, not just for modeling the single phase positive displacement compressors, but also the multi-phase positive dis displacement compressors, which have a lot more additional challenges associated with them. The effect of the interface diffusion was shown in a variety of test cases, and we've shown some approaches in Converge, including the higher order act, um, numerical scheme, the higher resolution grid, for example, using AMR, as well as the numerical technique of using surface compression um, to uh, mitigate those effects. We validated the, the models with a couple cases, although in this application, there's really not a lot of information available in the public to really get a very um, def definitive answer of whether or not your model is giving the right results for the right reasons. But overall, we did see reasonably good agreement in terms of flow rate, um, power, and temperature. Um, there is a lot of uncertainty in some of the cases about how that multi-phase flow interacts, especially with the outlet. So doing some studies on the domain extension and the um, alternate treatments of the, the pressure at those outlet boundary conditions could be something important to know. And then lastly, there's a variety of modeling choices available in Converge for multi-phase flow and knowing the advantages and disadvantages for all approaches and which one is more applicable to your case of interest is one of the key um, takeaways to try to get for, for these kind of problems. So with that, I am uh, finished with my webinar. I'd like to thank everybody for their attention, and we will have some time for questions if there are any.